Today's top story that Chief Minister Howard Quayle has accepted the resignation of the Minister for the Department of Health and Social Care, Mrs Beecroft. It's the last slipway launch. She's going to be birthed in the harbour to continue the service for another two or three months while we change over for the Mersey. I know it's been described many times by people as a poison chalice. Uh, well, I think my job is to make sure that the department, whenever I do leave it eventually, isn't a poison chalice for whoever comes in after me. Well, the motion states that I'm seeking to have a select committee of three members appointed to look into the current licence conditions, the delivery model and the funding of public service broadcasting. That's Manx Radio, right, is it? Well, it, Manx Radio is the deliverer of public service broadcasting at the present. We're hoping to create a sort of a, a, a hub, a sort of a community hub for everything cycling on the island, really. Quing is actually, it's the term for a, a, like a, a pin that connects the horse's harness to the plough. And if you actually set this Quing up correctly... It's a Manx it, name, is it? It is. Oh, it is right. a Manx name. I think the big difference of this building, if, if, if you look around, it's, uh, it's one of dynamic working. You know, you know, to me the decent thing to do, you, you do it with anyone, is to take a bouquet of flowers up to wish them well. Mistakes were made, there's, there's no point hiding that. The, the report was thorough, the committee did a good job in, in raising the concerns, and you've got to take that on the chin and, and learn from the mistakes that were made. So we're here to show the reality of abortion. Uh, this is a 22-week-old fetus. You can see it's been uh, treated very badly through the pr process of abortion. One of our attendees brought them. Um, obviously, we're ignoring the ignorance, really. We're, we're trying to say this is about everyone being together. Well, Dr. Promenade has certainly been taking a pounding over the last few hours. The promenade is actually deserted, hardly anyone around. Over top it near the sea terminal side is, I don't see anything quite like it. And uh, it's, it's brought up a lot of the paving stones. See these pictures, there's immense damage to the walkway uh, side, whole slabs being pulled up. Yeah, well, we've, uh, this is our number three shed and uh, we've been expanding slowly over six years and it's, it's a lovely thing that we've become fully established in the community. So we believe we can develop, as part of our harbour strategy, uh, Victoria Pier and uh, that, that will allow boats up to 240 metres, which is about three quarters of what, what there is in, out there at the moment, uh, and hopefully be able to develop quite an exciting industry. Was this company well managed, you think, when you took it over? It's far too early for me to say about the, the overall. But what I would say is, if I look at the health and safety performance of the organisation, it's absolutely exemplary. Well, as I say, I mean, a few, few years' time, I think it could actually be transformational, you know. I yeah. mean, you know, obviously, you know, some people sort of say Douglas is, 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 is going backwards. Actually, he's going to go very much forward very, very quickly. Well, you only need to look down a beach. Look at this. I mean, it's just amazing. How many people have you got? You know what? I've lost count. As everything around us in terms of uh, working boats, ferries, cruise ships, like, all get bigger, <clears throat> the Douglas Harbour becomes ever more inadequate for future purpose. But since we, we got into the building and we've seen some of the old safes and the deposit boxes, there's some really nice features. Uh, the police station, I believe, is an integral part of the collective of buildings in the town, uh, which are already owned by Manx National Heritage, in my view, uh, should own this and it could be transferred at uh, no cost. Logistically, it's been a hard job knowing where a lot of the athletes are. A lot of them come from the island today, the bulk of the team travelling today. The nine months of construction work and a few months of working on the electronics, basically a year after we started, the first dish is going up. Most of Douglas around this area has come to a complete halt because of the traffic situation. Um, there's a lot of uh, fire engines, of course, as you expect, in attendance, a lot of standing by. And at the moment, the uh, smoke is still gushing out of that building and uh, going right across the whole area. Yeah, when you drill down to it, it looks like the numbers are more significant by boat rather than by air. But of course, that's just one stat where there's somewhat uh, 20 different stats within that survey. Are you delighted to be asked to do this and that? I am. 
I'm willing and happy to do anything for the island. I love the island. I've been here, now, gosh, 30 years now, and uh, uh, and in you know another couple of hundred, I'll be accepted as being uh, proper Manx. To, to to kind of go out and, and, and achieve and, and win a medal for the island, and uh, yeah, just uh, I suppose just um, just letting it sink in now and just trying to trying to save the moment. It's uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster since uh, since competition. I think I am the most disgusted at this entire situation. I feel that the entire management from how the Sefton Group have been allowed to operate on this island in respect to the Castle Mona is absolutely disgusting. So as of the 1st of May, uh, we intend to take over the operation of the site, including the Glen. Mm. We have some very exciting plans for, for the site. We've we've increased our um, capacity from 1,500 at the Villa, uh, sorry at the uh, Bottleneck Car Park to uh, 4,000 now at the Villa Marina Gardens. And the number of births here has declined from 1,020 in 2010 to last year 2017 just 753. So we've got this loss of a quarter of, of the birth. Of course, if you look at BBC Local Radio and what it delivers, it's a very, very high quality product to local areas. It would be an absolute win-win for the Manx um, residents and also the content they produce. Well, we're delighted that it's reached the third reading in the House of Keys uh, tomorrow. Um, then, of course, the bill will move to Legislative Council for their scrutiny. It's not surprising because Manx Radio is the public service broadcaster of the Isle of Man and yet the remit of the committee didn't have Manx Radio in it. So, you know, one begins to wonder exactly um, what the remit is. Yeah, as you can probably tell, um, the, the work's progressing really well. We've got the mezzanine going in, uh, the um, consulting rooms on the top of the mezzanine are going in. So. We've got the funding, um, got the budget, and then been left to Dave ahead of Parks to get it all sorted, and he's come, he's come trumps with this one. And we've finally now signed all our legal documentation and are able to open the building up to the public to let them see inside and see what the town's acquired as an asset. What we're doing is we're ensuring that the strategic links with, with the UK and all the freight, all our food and building supplies, etc., that come over to the Isle of Man is under the control of the people of the Isle of Man. We have our own Isle of Man TT Museum. So, uh, yeah, it's, we're opening today. Sad news tonight that leading Manx TT racer Danine has died following fatal injuries sustained at the Churchtown section of the course during the superbike qualifying session on Wednesday. So he said if we can get somebody to do a piece of art or a, a display or an installation that's about 30 metres by 30 metres, uh, sorry 10 metres by 10 metres, about yeah. 30 feet by 30 feet, then we could see it from space and there's a great chance we can get this picture <laughs> that's used by Google, by yeah. Bing, by Apple mm -hmm. uh, and we can take that picture and use it and, and use it to sort of demonstrate what a great place it is here. Certainly uh, couldn't be better conditions for a trip to the Isle of Man than the, he's having this week. I mean, the sun is shining and for all counties, he's going to have a, an absolutely great time. So my role is to basically um, help this lab um, come to life and, and create the ecosystem environment that it's, that it's made for. So bringing entrepreneurs, investors, mentors together to help um, these entrepreneurs create, innovate and grow. Are you going to let the old man continue what they're doing? Um, I think, uh, you know, our views are pretty clear and we've been pretty consistent in them and we think it's really important that there should be greater openness. But hopefully there's some listening on both sides and maybe they'll be coming together in the middle. Well, it's been, a, it's been an extremely interesting uh, visit. Obviously, we've uh, made our case. Um, but it's been a two-way learning process, I think. And it's my first visit ever to the Isle of Man. And I really enjoyed it. And I think we go away with some interesting things to think about. The public have really not been involved um, as anything like as much as we'd have, we would have liked. Um, the government's gone ahead and taken the decision. We broadly supported it. We, we can see advantages in all this. But it would have been nice if there'd been a, um, a wider public debate.